Hello everyone and welcome back to Vanilla Minecraft. So last time we left off we were still working on our villager farm and that's what we'll continue to be doing today. Uh, hopefully we can get ourselves the remaining people we need. That would be nice. Uh, so far we just need more... That was terrible. Did I seriously not make this so that I can get back up here? That was stupid of me. So these two are going to be fine. They're just going to have to keep getting food for themselves, and that's no big deal. Uh, we only have three stalls left, to, or four stalls left to fill. Forgot about it. We were missing one blacksmith. That's okay. Uh, so, while we're waiting on that to happen. Let's go take a look around town so far. So we've got a cleric who's doing pretty nicely. We have traded with him, I think. Have we traded with him? I think we have. We've got a butcher who we've traded with. I should really get a pig farm going. You know what? Maybe let's work on that while we wait for the villagers to get going. So, I need some fences. Can't believe I built this out of oak fences. That was terrible. Uh, we need birch fences and a birch gate. Lovely. Most of what I wanted in one small package. Uh, let's see, where do I want to build the pig farm? I want it to be somewhere open enough. That's somewhere where I don't have to do too much excavating to make room. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's anything like that on the beaten path. So, alternate options. Uh, I could put it right here. I just have to fill this in with some sand. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Alright, so let's do that. So we'll get working on this construction project, and let's see, two should be more than enough, I hope. And let's get back to it. Okay. So, I've been thinking of stuff I would want to talk about, and I haven't really been able to come up with anything particularly interesting, so I'm thinking it might be a good idea to start turning this series into maybe a more Q&A type show, and I'm planning on doing the same thing with TFC uh, once that gets going. So. Ideally, I'd have two platforms to address people in. Something that's a little bit more uh, user-friendly, like uh, this vanilla Minecraft, where I'm not too focused on any particular job. I'm just kind of like working away on one thing or another. And uh, yeah, it makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, TFC, I'd be a little bit more fo focused on stuff that I'm actually doing. So it could be a little bit more difficult to address, like, bigger things. Uh, so there you go. Stuff like that. So if you want opinions, uh, ask questions for Vanilla Minecraft. If you want... Uh, this should be good enough. Up to... Up to here. So if you want opinions, Post questions on the comments of uh, my vanilla series if you want uh, uh, personal questions and stuff that would be a lot easier for me to answer uh, as long as I'm comfortable answering it uh, then TFC would be the better option I'm just gonna make a ton of these I know I don't need 24 with the size of the pen I have but uh, you know why not That should be more than enough, I think. 
All right, let's go sleep before the creepy crawlies come out. So that's kind of the direction I feel like I should go with this stuff. Uh, Vanilla is going to be more about opinion pieces and TFC, at least while we're uh, in sort of the the building and uh, stuff like that series. We'll be a bit more a bit more Q and A about myself. So that's the plan as it stands so far. Uh, now I do need my leads. Which I do have. And I'll take you because you're right here. Oh, thank you. Now let's go over to this one. Well done. One pig down. Two pigs down. Now the thing is, I don't know that I have... Oh, I, okay, I do have carrots over there. So, that's not the worst. And honestly, I don't eat carrots uh, for food because they're pretty terrible for that on their own. I think they're required in rabbit stew, now that I think about it. But, I don't have rabbits, so yeah. Do rabbits still teleport to their owners? Is that a thing that still happens? Because that was annoying for rabbit farming. To be perfectly fair. There we go. Two piggies. Make a third piggy. Alrighty, so now we have a pig farm. Well, a uh, pig pen. Uh, I wouldn't go so call so far as to call it a farm quite yet, but it'll get there. Um, oh, come on. Here we go. So now we'll be able to sell that to the butcher as well, which will be nice. Let's go see, is anybody in the pipe? Nope. Let's go see if anybody's up top. Should be about time for that by now. Okay. Oh, right, I have tons of carrots up here as well. One of you, eat your carrots. Eat your vegetables. Have fun. I'll be back in a little while. Um. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -dum. So, anyways, that's the approach I feel like I want to take with my two series that are going to be a little bit more talky. For the foreseeable future uh, which you know is is kind of those are the kinds of videos that I like to watch are the talkie videos where the person's talking less about what they're doing and more about uh, just random stuff uh, like for example I watch good boulder fist a whole ton because uh, I really think he has quite interesting things to say, especially when it comes to the YouTube environment itself. Uh, I watch a lot of Farlands or Bust, which is basically just talking. <laughs> I mean, it's walking in one direction, so not a whole lot to commentate on when it comes to that. So, well, you get the occasional, like, uh, alpha crazy terrain generation that's actually pretty awesome. But for the most part, it's interesting just to hear someone just it's like a, a vlog without having to look at just the person talking. Which, you know, isn't always a bad thing, but it's a lot easier to listen to and still at the f same time feel like if something happens, uh, you can be in on it, I guess. Like the floating block of ice, uh, a whole ton of that. So actually, when I started watching Farlands or Bus, uh, there was already a hundred episodes ish. Uh, a hundred and it was hundred and something, uh, low hundreds. 
Like, I don't think it would have been any higher than 120. And so I decided, you know what? I've got nothing to do while I'm uh, not working uh, every evening. And I was kind of, it was the off season for TV, so there wasn't anything to watch. And honestly, TV is kind of dying for me, so. So I decided, I'll watch it from the beginning. And uh, so I did. I watched Farlands or Bust from episode one of basically what was supposed to be a standardized Minecraft Let's Play. What was I here for? I know I was here for something. Oh well. I'm sure if I find out that I need it, I'll find it. And so, I started watching the series from the beginning, and uh, the the way I found it was that uh, Gavin mentioned it on the Rooster Teeth podcast, and I thought that was pretty cool. And then you find out that, you know, Gavin's been in quite a few of the flobathons. And so on and so forth. Looks like we're about to get our new recruit. Or not. Looks like it's very one-sided. Oh yeah, very one-sided. Poor soul. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's how I found out about it, and then I, I started watching it from the beginning. And that's when I realized that, you know, YouTube can be a very small place, how basically all the big names that I know, know each other. So I can make a direct link from basically all the YouTubers I watch to any of the other YouTubers I watch. Which is really weird to think about. The fact that the internet is a big place, and yet it's still a very, very small place uh, in the right crowds, which is which is kind of nice. It's nice to know that there's a, a community that you fit with, right? Like that you're not necessarily just identified by one particular. Uh, set, but you're also like, uh, there's a, there's a bunch of people out there who have differing opinions of you, but s different, differing opinions and interests, but they have enough in common with you that you feel you have some sort of, rel uh, relatability to, uh, at, at, at least some sort of level. And, uh, that have, you know, similar interests. And yet, that group is still varied enough to the point where you don't feel like you're watching the same thing over and over again. Or that you can hear differing opinions on the same subject. Uh, within, you know a standard amount of time from it like they'll they'll talk about the same stuff at usually around the same time and they'll have different opinions on it but they'll still you know they'll have the same general attitude towards how they approach it which is a pretty interesting way of viewing things I don't know, I'm the kind of person who's like, uh, I'd like to hear as many opinions on a subject as I can, uh, so long as the person expressing that opinion is expressing it in a level-headed manner. Which, don't get me wrong, you can completely disagree with something or be frustrated with something and still present it in a level-headed manner. And that's something that I feel is very, a very underappreciated quality. 
it seems like today's culture is just validating outrage. Like you're allowed to be angry and uh, and express it negatively, which to me is just it's unhealthy. Lashing out is not should not be encouraged. It should be because there are ways to manage anger and, or frustration without having to be volatile about it. As a matter of fact, there's an entire field dedicated to that. Like, anger management is a thing. <laughs> and it's not just about people who are necessarily physically violent with their anger, it's also people who are just controlled by it. That they feel so outraged at stuff, so frustrated by things, that it just dominates their whole day. Where you are at the mercy of your anger. If something sets you off, uh, it has hold over you for the rest of your day. And that is no way to live. And what's weird about the culture today is that some people choose that. They go out of their way to have that experience. And that, it's just absurd to me. It makes no sense why people choose to live in such a negative mindset all the time. But sometimes it's better to have negativity directed toward uh, someone else than negativity directed inward. And that can lead to, you know, people deciding to be angry at other people to avoid the anger they have at themselves. When ultimately they have the choice to just get that anger under control, period. They don't have to be angry at themselves or others. They can find a way to address it in a way that gives them peace of mind. And Like, I'm in an environment where there's quite a lot of arguing around me. Um, it's nothing that ever gets out of hand or anything, but... Uh, it can be a bit tricky to know how to handle a situation when somebody or something gets out of hand. I also live in a, a, an environment where the opinions of those around me rarely matches my own. And sometimes seems a little bit over the top or extreme to me. Uh, and I do get easily frustrated with things. But unlike those around me, I don't express that outwardly uh, in a... A new librarian. Well, you can go live in the village. Have fun. Uh, in a way that's harmful to anyone else around me. Uh, like, obviously I realize I have the right to be angry. Obviously, you have the right to feel whatever you want to feel. It is the decision you make in expressing that anger that defines, you know, Uh, a lot about who a person is. In my opinion, anyway. Uh, one of the most important things to exercise in, for me is restraint. So if something does get me angry or frustrated uh, in the moment, I definitely just, you know, take the time to process the fact that that 
that has happened that I have that something is bothering me and if I'm unsure why it's bothering me I take the time to figure that out if I know why it's bothering me then I just take the time to let it cool down and process it because usually if I know why it's bothering me it's it's a very just whatever reason it doesn't matter like if something's doing something just gross or rude or just and they they have no idea you can you can try to point it out to them that like yeah could you could you not but i mean sometimes it's just the environment you're in it's the people you're running around uh they feel that uh they don't have to have any restraint whatsoever in how they're and how they're behaving just you know there's such a thing as being too close <laughs> to someone. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, more often than not, I'm around family. And uh, my family has some mannerisms that uh, sometimes can really bother me. <laughs> And I understand that is that is entirely my problem. And therefore, it is something that I have to deal with. It is not something that they should deal with. Because they don't do that stuff in in public or, you know, or stuff like that. Or they don't do that stuff intentionally or so on and so forth. Like, the most benign example I can think of is just uh, my brother and dad just burp as loud as they can whenever they have the feeling to. So it's like, seriously? Seriously? That's the kind of people I'm related to. <laughs> and it does aggravate me a lot, especially because, you know, it's, it's just gross. Um, but as opposed to, you know, exploding at them, I do realize that it is, more often than not, it's when it's at their, their living space. It, it is their living space. So, um... You know, I, I you should never have to tell someone how to behave in their own home, right? Like that's just ridiculous. And so I realized that it is entirely my own problem. All right, we were gonna tear this down in this episode. Whoops. Uh, not this, but the the whole rail system up here. Forgot about that. Um. So yeah, I realized that it's my problem, and. Therefore, I should deal with it. So I do. I I internalize the problem. I internalize the anger. I'm like, okay, this is bothering me. I don't have to express that it is bothering me. Uh, I can ask politely if I want, but, you know, it's, it's their own home. So that's fine. So I give it, like, less than a minute, and I'm over it, right? Like... You you address you address the problem in your head, and that's it. You just let go. Oh, that didn't hurt me last time. Did I come down here? Oh no, I didn't come down here last time. That's right. So yeah, just because you have the right to feel however you want to feel however you need to feel doesn't mean you can't let it go because there's nothing wrong with letting it go and I will not make a frozen reference by singing a part of the song I was gonna say I wasn't gonna make one at all but in saying that I would have had made a reference to it so 
I bailed at the last minute and said uh, to the song by the song. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. I was just saying the phrase letting it go so often that I was like, oh my god, now it's gonna be expected. So, yeah. Uh, we are at time for today, though. A little bit over time, actually. So that's going to do it for this one. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed all that fun stuff, as always. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, leave a comment. Any and all feedback is very much appreciated. It helps me out a ton. And uh, if you do want to keep up to date on this series, see how progress is going on all this stuff, or interested on asking me some questions, getting some answers hearing my opinions on some things then uh, please feel free to subscribe uh, you'll get a notification every time a new episode of this series comes up which will be Thursdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. and that'll be that so yeah that's gonna do it for this and I will see you all in the next one bye for now